Hey there, Tim Warner for CBT Nuggets here, and welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget on Server Manager and Windows Server 2012. So what's the deal with Server Manager and Windows Server 2012? Like me, you may have been underwhelmed by previous versions of Server Manager, in particular and most recently, Windows Server 2008 R2. It was slow, it was clunky, and it used the Microsoft Management Console that's been around for many years now. The first thing we'll see about Server Manager, which is completely redesigned, I mean absolutely new application in Windows Server 2012, is that we see that the application has fundamentally moved away from MM and instead toward a PowerShell host application architecture. Very similar to what we find in recent versions of Exchange Server with the Exchange Management Console. Some notable features that we'll take a look at in our upcoming demo are things like enterprise-wide server groups, connection to physical or virtual machines. There's absolutely no distinction here in the 21st century with VDI and virtualization being de rigueur. With Server Manager, we can have quick access to all of our favorite administrative tools. MMC is still around, as you'll see. And then finally, for those of you who like your Windows Server tools accessible on your administrative workstation, Server Manager is included in the Windows 8 Remote Server Administration, or RC. That tool set, please download that as soon as you can from the Microsoft website. When you fire up Windows Server 2012, you'll observe that the Server Manager tool opens out of the box by default. Other ways to open Server Manager if you happen to close it while you're in session include hitting this first button that supplants, you'll notice, the old start button that we've had for the previous many, many years. Or from a command prompt or PowerShell environment, we can simply type Server Manager, either upper, lower case, mixed case it really doesn't matter. Now let me give you a quick walkthrough of the Server Manager interface. It defaults to this dashboard and in particular we have this informational welcome screen that we can hide if we don't want to see it. It does have some really nice tips and tricks in it though. You'll also see underneath that welcome screen these tiles that are reminiscent of Metro UI tiles and they represent server roles in server groups. Basically the idea with Server Manager is you can create these logical entities called server groups and bring in connections to remote servers. Each server, each Windows Server 2012 machine, will have its own instance of Server Manager. Likewise, if you've installed Server Manager on your administrative workstation. So you might have one collection of groups on one machine and one collection of groups on another. The idea, though, is you can aggregate servers on whatever basis you want, geographical, functional, etc., and perform operations on multiple servers at once. It's a really neat technology. You'll also notice, if I come back to the dashboard, that when you associate servers to an instance of Server Manager, you get transparent access to all of those server roles. In other words, if there were another machine on my network that hosted, let's say, the print server server role, and we added that to my Group 1 storage group, we would have an extra tile here that enables us to track metadata on that print service. In other words, Microsoft has transparentized, or what's a better term, probably virtualized the notion of the server and the service. It's meant to be as transparent as possible. And these are all fully hyperlinked. You can click into the event infrastructure, services, best practice analyzer, performance counter on each of your server roles. If you click the local server tab, this gives you completely hyperlinked access to just about every bit of metadata on your local server. You can customize your Ethernet connection, you can customize Windows Firewall, change the workgroup domain identification, all of that kind of stuff that we're normally used to finding by by means of control panel applets. Again, most of this stuff deals with event logging, best practice analyzer, that kind of overall daily management kind of stuff. If you're wondering, well, where are my tools? We would visit the tools menu up here where we get a tremendous drop down of all of our classic tools. Now, this list would be added to as you add server roles. For instance, I've added Active Directory domain services, thus, I have access to those consoles. And these are, in fact, as I stated, a little bit earlier using the Microsoft Management Framework, at least in the Windows Server 2012 release candidate. This little caution icon you're seeing here is notifications. This 
populates with really helpful error conditions, informations, warnings, dealing with goings on on your server. When you click one of your available role services or server roles, you'll see a list of any servers that have that role assigned. The right click or shortcut menu is especially important in managing in Server Manager. You'll notice by right clicking my server, DC1, I get a tremendous amount of flexibility here in terms of adding roles and features, restarting the server, accessing computer management or the PowerShell console, and then we have all of these graphical and command line Active Directory utilities. Similarly, if I check out the DHCP service, I can right click the server and I'll get a different set of options. I can open the DHCP manager, for instance. The manage menu in Server Manager it basically enables you to quickly add or remove features and roles from specific machines, or you can customize servers and server groups. This has been a really fast nutshell overview, but I think at this point you know the basic goings on with regard to Server Manager and Windows Server. 2012. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.